Welcome to the Perks Guide for Steward. One of my favorites in the game is it offers so much variety. For the purposes of this video, we're going to assume everything is working as intended. So if they do fix something later on that's not working, this will still be viable. As I'm running through these in the hopes that I might be able to open your eyes to something that is new. At 25, we have Frugal and Warrior's Diet, where Frugal is minus 5% wages in your party and minus 15% recruitment costs. Warrior's Diet, minus 10% food consumption in your party and no morale penalty for having a single type of food. I know a lot of people love to go with money and the recruitment cost being dropped definitely is nice. But later on, money doesn't really become a big issue. For me, it's food. Food is very important because that is your food variety, which helps you level steward and gain additional character levels. But then you don't have to run back all the time for it. This is one of four perks that I'm going to show you in which you can get your food consumption reduced in a siege by at least 80%. And you could hit 100% so you consume no food in a siege. For me, that's what's most important is that they do not have that. And I will take this for myself and for other party leaders because I don't want them to use a lot of food so they can gain steward skill as fast as possible. If you have a thousand wages, minus 5% wages, that's only 50 dinars a day. I don't want to have to run back for food because you could have one battle that could get you 20 to 40,000 in loot. That more than covers that 5% wages. So I'll take Warrior's Diet for everyone. At 50, we have Drill Sergeant and seven veterans. Now this one will be taken for multiple people as Drill Sergeant is plus two daily XP to troops in your party and a governor minus 5% garrison wages in a governed settlement. Seven veterans plus four daily XP for tier four plus troops in your party and Governor plus one militia recruitment in a governed settlement. This is pretty straightforward. For me, I want Drill Sergeant. And that's because I want everybody to get XP, not just tier four plus. Sometimes I'm going to have twos and threes, not all the time because of what's going to come up here very shortly. For my governors, the 5% garrison wages, once again, wages aren't a huge thing. At 1,000, that's only 50. For me, plus militia. Everybody knows I live on militia because they can't be starved out and they cost you no money. So in a settlement, I want that. So for myself and for party leaders, I take drill sergeant. For a governor, I will take seven veterans. The only way I might go ahead and take drill sergeant is if I purposely have 300, 400, 500 in my garrison, then I might go ahead and take it if I want to live on those. But any other time, my governor's taking seven veterans. 75, stiff upper lip and sweatshops. This is one I actually struggle with. Minus 10% food consumption in your party while it is part of an army. This is the second of four perks that can get you 100% reduction in food consumption while you're in a siege. It also has minus 20% garrison wages in a governed settlement. The other is sweatshops, plus 20% production rate to owned workshops. But then it has a quartermaster perk, plus 20% siege engine build rate in your party. And that is quartermaster. So how I believe that works is the other party members do contribute to building. More troops you have, the faster you build, and therefore it would cause you to build faster. The problem I have with sweatshops is the plus 20% production rate to own workshops. As everybody has known, I am very big into testing workshops. And under this current system, the more production you have, the less you're going to make unless you're going to micromanage. So it comes at a cost for you. Now, for me, I would rather have the minus food consumption. As I discussed in the first one, I am very big on that. For my other members, of a party, I would have sweatshops. I want them to have the increased build rate. And then obviously for a governor, you would have stiff upper lip. It's only for a castle, but they're a governor, so I'd want them to have it. But I can understand this is one of those 
that you can make an argument for both of them. 100 Efficient Campaigner and Paid in Promise. Efficient Campaigner is one extra food for each food taken during village raids of your party and minus 25% troop wages while party is part of an army. Paid in Promise. Minus 25% companion wage and recruitment fees. And discarded armors are donated to troops for increased experience. For myself, I always take Paid in Promise as I want to donate or discard armor to increase troops, not just for myself, but I could pull them from my clan parties into mine, increase them, and send them back. So for myself, I take paid in promise every time. However, for anybody else, I take efficient campaigner. Minus 25% troop wages is a ton. So that's what I take for just those two people. One, 25, giving hands and logistic. Well, Giving Hands is now discarded weapons for donated troops, and a governor perk plus 10% tariffs in a governed settlement where logistic is plus 4 party morale when the number of mounts is greater than the number of foot troops, and plus 10% tax income. So for myself, obviously I'm going to take Giving Hands all the time. And for my other party leaders, I just give them logistic because they're probably not going to get the perk, but it's the only one that's going to matter to them. For a governor, that is a bit different. You're going to have to look and see how much your tariffs are and how much your tax is to decide which one is actually best. So that is going to change according to how much you're making for that town. 150, Aid Corps and Relocation. With Aid Corps, wounded troops in your party are no longer paid wages. Right, governor perk plus 20% hearth growth in villages bound to the governed settlement. Relocation plus 25% influence gain from donating troops and plus 20% effect from boosting projects in a governed settlement. For me, this is pretty straightforward. I'm going to take Aid Corps for myself. I will also take it for all my party members. When you get done with a big battle and you're going to have hundreds and hundreds of wounded. You're going to pay no wages for them for days at a time. It can be thousands and thousands of dinars for that. Now, for other party leaders, I would also go ahead and I would take a core, as I want them to not have the same thing. The influence cost of donating troops that you're going to gain, it just it's not that much, and I'm not that much worried about it. For a governor... This one's kind of eh, with the 20% effect from boosting projects, it's not a whole ton. It's only 20% and most project boosts are very tiny to begin with. The 20% hearth growth in villages bound to settlement, it, once again, that 20% isn't much as hearth growth is very, very tiny. And it takes a long time to see those benefits. So personally, I can understand which either one that you want to pick. It's not a big deal. I just kind of pick gay core just to stay with it. But I'm, you can make a case for either of them. 175, Gourmet and Sound Reserves. With Gourmet, you double the morale bonus from having a diverse food in your party. With a governor, minus 10% garrison food consumption during sieges in the governed settlement. With Sound Reserves, minus 10% troop upgrade cost and minus 10% food consumption during sieges in your party. This is another one that you could take for the minus food consumption, which would honestly give you five different ones. We've already got a 10%, a 10%, and here is another 10%. So you could take that. However, for me, I like having gourmet. I like getting double the morale bonus from having it. As if you are going to recruit, you're going to use morale to recruit troops. And I want to get as much morale as possible. And this gives you an extra one morale for every food variety you have over three. So that way, if you have a full food variety, you hit seven, you're going to be able to get an additional seven morale that's going to be sitting there. So that's a free seven troops that you can recruit however long it takes to drop off again. I would definitely take Gourmet for myself, for my party leaders, and then obviously for governors. But I can make a case for sound reserves if you want to have that little bit of cost reduction and food consumption reduction. 
200 contractors and forced labor. Contractors minus 25% wages and upgrade costs of mercenary troops in your party, and a governor perk plus 10% project effects in a governed settlement. Forced labor. Prisoners in your party provide carrying capacity if they are a standard troop, and then plus 1% construction speed for every three prisoners, which is a governor. Obviously, for me, all the way forced labor. I want to have that extra carrying capacity so I don't slow down. Same thing for other my party members. And for a governor, the construction cost is massive. When you talk about having upwards of 100 prisoners, you're looking at 33% faster construction speed. That's a pretty big number to get stuff done. So for everybody involved, I would take forced labor. 225, uh, Arenicos Heroes or Arenicos Mules. I hope I'm saying that right. This is another tough one that you can go ahead and do. Plus 10% carrying capacity for troops in your party. And then with mules, plus 20% carrying capacity for pack animals in your party. Now let's take these one at a time. The pack animals one will give you more carrying capacity. But then let's look at the secondary perk. Minus 20% trade penalty for mounts. And the other one is minus 20% trade penalty for pack animals. With the minus 20% trade penalty for mounts, you can make a ton of money, especially when you're getting mounts with one of the medicine perks veterinarian. Therefore, I almost want to have horses for, to get the reduction penalty for selling mounts, but I would rather have the mules for the extra carrying capacity. So you can make a case for both. However, let me say this. For myself, I take the mules. I want the carrying capacity. But your companion clans, your clan parties, the AI, they don't carry many pack animals. And they're going to be able to get more out of having horses, the plus 10% carrying capacity for troops, because they're going to have a lot of troops. So for my clan parties, I would actually take horses for myself. I would take mules, but you could make a case for both. 250, Master of Planning and Master of Warcast. With planning, minus 40% food consumption with your party in a siege camp. And then a governor plus 20% effectiveness to continuous projects in a governance settlement. Where Master of Warcraft is minus 25% troop wages while in a siege camp, minus 5% food consumption of the town's populace in a governance settlement. Now for myself, I want master of planning. I want that food consumption reduction at all times as much as I can get it. And that's the same thing with all of my clan parties. They don't get a lot of food variety if you're ever able to check. They normally get four, maybe five different types of food and not much of it. So I don't want them to use a lot of food. Now with a governor, I actually do prefer the minus 5% food consumption of town populace, so they use less food. It's not much, so you can make a case for the other project. If you're going to run a lot of continuous projects, I can understand that. But for myself and for my clan parties, I will absolutely take master planning every time. You can make a case for both, but I want the minus food consumption so they can't starve out as quick in a siege. And finally, one of my favorite perks of all time, Price of Loyalty. Sadly, this was nerfed not long ago when it used to provide minus 0.5% to food consumption, wages, and combat-related morale loss for each point of steward above 250. It used to be 200. What that means is that when you get this perk at 275, that is 25, cut that in half, is 12%. So immediately you get minus 12% food consumption, wages, and combat-related morale loss. If you get this up to level 300, this would then become 40%. That would be 80 times 0.5. That would be 40. Therefore, with this 40%, the 40% in Master of Planning in a Siege and two of the other three 10% perks, you could have minus 100% food reduction 
while you're in a siege. So that's why I love this one so much, even after the nerf. With the governor, it's a plus 5% tax for each skill point above 200 in a governed settlement. Most people never get that high, but that comes out to be a huge amount where it's 37.5% at level 275. Those are the steward free perks that I would choose. And I love steward so much because it has so much variety in it in so many different ways food consumption, wages, carrying capacity. There's just so much that it offers, so much versatility. And steward, you gain XP passively. And it's very easy to gain steward by having a lot of troops and full food variety. And as you know, XP from a skill translates to character XP. So having steward and running it at full is going to gain you levels much quicker for your hero. I hope this helped you out. Until next time, take care and thanks for watching.